cool shot. Thanks, person driving down there. Look at the thing! It's so nice! Oh, that's perfect. There we go. Perfect. Nearly fell over. <laughs> All right. Okay, hello everyone. Um, today's episode of Off The Rails is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to do it more in a kind of story time style because quite a lot went on in the space of 24 hours on this trip which I just did a terrible terrible job of documenting. So if you didn't know myself and three of my best friends went into railing earlier this summer um, over like July and August kind of time. Now up until this point the trip had been relatively drama free like we you know everything was going pretty much fine until the 24 hours of hell which we're gonna call into fails. So the story begins in Lake Bled. We were sitting by the lake. It's absolutely beautiful. So it eventually got to the point where we needed to head back to our hostel and pack up our things, which we did. Um, we were running a bit behind, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, and we realized that the walk to the station that we needed to go to was 26 minutes. Um, and our train was in 22. Hello, we are just walking to the hostel. I literally look like human buckaroo right now. It's a bit of a joke. I mean, the view's nice at least. Not from this way, but from that way, the view is lovely. We then began to run to the station and actually surprisingly managed to get there with two minutes to spare. Huh. Your destination is on the right. Yes. However, when we got to the station, there was just something not quite right about it. Like it had cars parked on one of the tracks and the station was all shut, like the big building on the platform was completely shut, um, no lights on, looked like it had been shut for years. <laughs> and one of the ticket offices had been converted into a bar, but not like a proper like cool rustic indie bar, like a bar that seemed very much illegal. <laughs> yeah, so part of me starts to think, hmm, maybe this isn't quite right. Now, I would understand this, but Interrail itself, like the actual Interrail service, recommended us this station. If you don't know, basically on the Interrail website, you can uh, reserve your trains in advance, which we did. Okay, so the plan for today is Lake Bled, and then we're gonna go back to our hostel. We're gonna go walk to Bled Gisero, this um, train station that's in Bled, and then we're gonna go up to Jess and Nice. We're gonna have a Jessa nice time there. And then we're gonna go across lots of Slovenia to Zidani Most and we're going to make the most of our time there which we don't really have a choice about because we have a three hour layover <laughs> and then after that we're going to go all the way across and eventually arrive in Budapest which is going to be a Buda fest because it's a party. Okay, <laughs> that's the plan. So we're sitting there waiting for our train to Jess Nice. Um, and it just doesn't come. So in the end, we decided to phone a taxi company, which I did, phoned them up, they gave me a quote, blah, 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 said they would be there as soon as they could. Put the phone down, and then about five minutes passed, and I thought maybe I should ask them how long it's actually gonna be. So I phoned again, and he told me it would be 15 minutes. So we waited for 15 minutes. Then 20 minutes had passed, and I decided I'm gonna phone again. So I phoned the same guy, the same guy picked up the phone, um, and asked him where our taxi was, and he went, oh, but you didn't book a taxi. Eh? I know there is no way that I gave any indication that I didn't want to book the taxi. I phoned him up two separate times, the second time just to confirm what time our taxi was coming. And he gave me an answer. Like, I don't know what he was up to, but like, it wasn't good, okay? I don't know what happened. So we were then stranded at this station called Bled Gisero in the middle of Slovenia. Um, our combined like cumulative total of battery charge was 20% um, between four of us. So like it wasn't looking good. So the other issue was that Jess and East was a half an hour journey away in the car and our train was in 20 minutes by this point. So there was a very slim chance of us actually getting that train. Um, but all of a sudden Liam spotted this minibus pull up out of nowhere. So I ran over to the minibus and I said to the guy like, please, 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 is there any way you can get us to Jess and East? Like, please, please, please. And he said to me, there's absolutely no way you're ever gonna get that train. However, there is another station which I can drive you to. The train from Jess and East went 
to this station as well. So this was like a later stop. So we had loads of time before that train was gonna come. It actually was really near where we had originally started. So Interrail messed this up. Like we should have just been getting on that train all along, but whatever, he drove us to that station. However, this taxi driver spent the entire journey trying to convince us not to go to Budapest, but to go to Zagreb instead. Now Zagreb is in Croatia. We did not want to go there. Like we, we'd already planned our trip. I'd love to go there. Like it seems like a really nice place, but on this trip, we did not have time to go to Zagreb. Like that was, it was not a possibility. It was not happening. We'd already paid money for our hostel, our train journey, everything to Budapest and then for the rest of the trip. There was no time, and I repeat, no time for us to go to Zagreb. And I made this quite clear to the taxi driver, obviously in a polite way, but he was quite insistent that we should go to Zagreb. To the point where he even phoned his wife while driving us in this taxi to ask her advice on how we should get to Zagreb from the station we were going to. So he gave us this entire rundown of all the things to do in Zagreb, um, all the reasons we should go to Zagreb, how to get to Zagreb, like, we did not want to go to Zagreb, okay? So that was a very painful journey to the other station, but finally, we got to the station, our train arrived, we got on it, thank God, um, and headed to Zidani Most. So we got to Zidani Most, which is literally a bridge and three houses, and that's kind of it. But eventually, our train turned up, it was really delayed, um, we sat on the floor and just played cards in the meantime, we met some nice French girls, <laughs> um, and then we got onto the train, and everything was fine, we thought. Well, hello MTV, and welcome to my train carriage. We've got some bunk beds. Um, yeah, this is where I'm sleeping. Cannot wait. It's currently 1.08 a.m. And we've got until 8.20 to have a little snoozer. It's quite nice having a bed on the train. Um, the train that we got to Zidane Most was like the <laughs> like most run-down, old-fashioned train we've ever been on, or been on so far on this trip, but also probably ever been on. Um, and like the lights just kept going off like sporadically during the journey and bearing in mind it was dark outside as well so like we were just plunged into darkness every so often when we were like okay cool <laughs> like that's happening then one thing we've noticed about european train stations is they don't have those electric boards that you have in like the uk which tells you where the trains are going and what time they're coming and whether they're delayed or not so it's kind of like a stab in the dark you kind of just guess and if a train isn't there, you just assume that it's been delayed and not cancelled or never existed in the first place. Well, we've stopped then. One other kind of minor detail is that there was a giant moth in our carriage on the train, which we just could not get rid of. And in the end, we slept with this giant moth in the carriage. And apparently the entire cast of A Bug's Life was also in our carriage because I woke up with my whole leg, like, bitten to pieces. Oh, it was horrible and gross. Is that, what is that? Oh my god. Oh, god. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Wow, it's like camo. So, everything was good. We'd made it to Budapest despite every attempt <laughs> to not get us there. And can I just say that we paid like £80 for this train from uh, Zidane Most to Budapest, so like we were getting that train. Okay, I was gonna walk if I had to, to get that train. But once in Budapest, we arrived at our hostel. So we arrived at the hostel about 9 a.m. Um, and the guy at the reception desk told us that we couldn't actually check in until 2 p.m. It's quite standard that that happens at hostels and there was quite a lot to do in the um, local area. So we thought we'd just do that for the afternoon, come back and check in properly. But we had these massive rucksacks on our back and on that day it was like 42 degree heat. So we asked the guy if it was possible to leave our bags at the hostel while we went and explored. He said yes, it's quite a standard thing that hostels kind of let you leave your bags there during the day um, in big lockers. So he took us to this room where they had lockers. Usually these lockers are made of metal, they have big padlocks, like they're really secure. These ones, not so much. They were kind of like DIY, like made of wood, um, easy to destroy kind of material. Um, they didn't look overly safe, but when you're staying at a hostel, you can't really argue with the guy and say, tell him that his facilities are rubbish. So we didn't, we just kind of went along with it. Myself, Liam and Callum all put our bags into these lockers and then just by sheer chance, Ed's bag was slightly too wide to fit into a locker. There wasn't enough room for his in a locker. And so the guy said, 
all right, I'll put your locker into a locked room instead. Callum, thank God, said to the guy, well, if you're gonna put Ed's bag in a locked room, can we just put all four of them in a locked room and then we just know they're all together and they're all safe. And since one's going in a locked room, we might as well put all of them in a locked room. So the guy's like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Like he was quite chilled. He was like, yeah, just do what you wanna do as long as I can get rid of you in the next five minutes, I'm happy. So we went and put our bags in the lockers, went out for the day in Budapest, came back about 2 p.m. Um, we were told that the room wasn't even nearly ready because they'd had an incident. So we're like, right, okay, whatever. Um, there were police cars outside as well. Um, so we were kind of like in the dark, like we didn't really know what was going on. So we just sat there, we ate our lunch, um, we waited. Um, and it got to about half past three, I think, before they actually let us into our room. So we took our bags out, everything, I can't even explain, but there was just this atmosphere of something just wasn't right. And it wasn't until the next morning where we overheard two of the other guests of the hostel discussing a theft. And so basically, long story short, um, what happened was that one guest of the hostel, on his way out, had broken into these wooden lockers um, and taken everything. People's laptops, money, passports, cameras, everything you can think of, like phones, like all, everything valuable, um, was gone. So this happened, we think, during the time between 9am and 2pm, so in the time that we were out, and in exactly, precisely the time that our bags would have been in those lockers. As an indication, what was in my locker at the time was my GoPro, um, about 200 euros, my Kindle, <laughs> not that anyone would want to take my Kindle, I'm sure, but like, I had some valuables in there, my passport was in there, um, and I guess the same for the other guys. We so narrowly dodged a bullet, like, I can't even believe how fluky it was that we didn't have our bags in those lockers. Honestly, if Ed's bag had been any narrower, we would have, you know, all of our stuff would have been taken and that would have been game over. We stayed in Budapest for four nights and these people who were meant to have left on the night that we arrived had to stay that whole time because they didn't have passports, they couldn't leave the country. They're, you know, they were stranded. But what's, I think, the worst thing of all of this is that the hostel never even told us. So from my knowledge, this could have happened either before we got to the hostel and yet they still tried to let us put our stuff in the lockers, or it happened in the time where our stuff was in the locked room and everyone else's stuff was in the locker and we'd already got there. We, we still don't really know what happened. All I know is that there was CCTV, so they know the guy's face, but the stupidest thing of all is that they never took this guy's details. At hostel, it's kind of standard procedure that they take your passport, they write down your details, like so your address, your name, your passport number, your date of birth, all of this stuff, on check-in. For some reason, the staff at this hostel, who were absolutely rubbish, by the way, just as a side note, they never took his details, they never wrote anything down about him, so they literally have no idea who this man is. I mean, I'll never know if he even got caught, because we were never told anything by the hostel about it, we just had to overhear someone else explaining. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you did enjoy it and the story time kind of style. Um, the Off The Rails vlogs will be back as normal tomorrow in Budapest, so stay tuned for that, make sure you subscribe down below. I'll also leave the link to the playlist with all of the videos in uh, somewhere in my crotch if you'd like to go and watch those. And finally, don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it, and maybe comment down below, comment E-E-S-F, so every episode so far, if you've watched every episode so far. This has been episode six of Off The Rails. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Yeah.